Today we'll talk about elastic moduli. It is the ratio of stress to strain and is constant for a given material. That is, different material have different stress to strain ratio. According to Hooke's law, the elastic, I mean, the stress that is being exerted upon an object is proportional to the strain, which implies that the stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity or the elastic moduli and then we have this this quantity is a constant is a constant and that is why the elastic modulus is constant for different materials now the elastic modulus e is therefore equal to the stress the ratio of the stress to the strain the elastic modulus has a unit of Newton per meter squared simply because the unit of the stress is Newton per meter square. Newton per meter square. Stress is force over area. And the strain, its unit is extension because strain is the fractional increase in the length of a material. And then the, the, the strain is the ratio of the extension to the original length original length the unit of original length is meters and the unit of this is meters so it tends to cancel out so the unit of elastic moduli is, is newton per meter square now let's talk about the different types of elastic modulus there are three different types the Young's modulus, the shear modulus, the bulk modulus. When a compression force and a tension F act on an object in a unit cross sectional area below the elastic limit, the ratio of the stress to the strain is referred to as the Young's modulus. That is, Young modulus is the ratio of the stress to the strain below the elastic limit when a compression force and a tension F act on an object in a unit cross sectional area. As a result, Young modulus with symbol Y is given as the longitudinal or the normal or the tensile stress. all over the same thing longitudinal normal tensile but we are going to have so, but we are going to have strain here since it is the ratio of stress to strain but in this case it is the longitudinal or the normal or the tensile stress to the longitudinal the normal or the tensile strain so you can use anyone you can use tensile stress over tensile strain you can say tensile stress you can say normal stress over normal strain then you can say longitudinal stress over longitudinal strain um, the young modulus depends only on the composition of objects it does not depend on the size of objects it, the, the reason is because the young modulus okay suppose that um, a material the balloon suppose that you exert a stress on this material normal stress on this material the molecules of this material are the ones that will be affected if the material compresses like this it is because the molecules rearranges themselves in order to form a flattened substance as a result the young modulus does not it, it only depends on the composition of the object. It does not depend on the size or the shape of the object. Let's talk about shear modulus. The shear modulus is the ratio of the shear stress to the shear strain. I talked about shear stress in this video. Check this video. You will learn a lot about shear stress. Suppose that we have a rectangular block that looks like this I will use the dotted lines for the original shape of the of the block if you exert 
a tangential force i talked about shear stress if you check this video you will really learn a lot you will understand what i'm what i mean by a tangential force if you exert a tangential force on this block it will shift it will shift a little bit like this to this position so we can have a new block the same block but in different dimension so we can have it like this if you exert you have just exerted the force so there is an opposite force here that makes it looks like this so to form yes so we can have something of this nature all right so this is the new dimension of the block because you have exerted the tangential force on the material as a result there will be a change in length in this place there will be a change in length let's call it data x let's call this data x this data x then we have let's call the original height the original height of the material let's call that h then since the material has been displaced through a particular angle let's call that angle theta now it means that the shear modulus which is the ratio of the shear stress to the shear strain shear stress is the tangential force per unit area so all over the shear strain the shear strain is the ratio of the extension which is the change in x to the height of the material which is h it should be noted that the height according to if you use uh, this trigonometry identity stuff so katoa all right so katoa that sign equals to opposite over hypotenuse then in this case we can use tan which is opposite over adjacent in this case we have opposite and adjacent so the tan of angle theta is the opposite which is delta x all over height it means that delta x over i over h can be replaced with tan theta all right let me rewrite that so i replace it okay so i will replace this with tan theta it means that g is equals to the tangential force f sub t all over area all over tan theta also because tan theta is always very very small is always very very small tan theta can be approximated it can be approximated to theta as a result the shear stress i mean the shear modulus is the ratio of the shear stress which is ft over area all over the angular displacement which is theta all right now it should be noted that shear modulus is only applicable to solids and that the shear stress can only change the shape of a solid it does not change the volume of the solid okay let's talk about the bulk modulus the bulk modulus is peculiar to fluids and then for instance we are going to use a liquid as a case study a liquid can only be a liquid most times can be studied in a container so the volume will be considered and not the area so suppose that we have a liquid uh, a liquid for instance any liquid okay okay let me just write fluid here all right suppose that we have a liquid in this container with volume v1 but the volume v1 with volume v1 now suppose that you exert a compressive force on this um, liquid if you exert a compressive force the compressive force is meant to compress it it means that the volume of the material will be decreased that is to say v1 will be greater than v2 
since the volume is decreased now it means that the change in the volume the change in volume will be equal to v2 minus v1 change is the new minus the old so it's that is to say this will give us a negative value a negative change in volume because the volume is decreased Now, it should be noted that the normal force per unit area applied to the fluid is called pressure. It's called pressure. That's the definition for pressure. Now, in this case, the pressure can be referred to as the volume stress. The volume stress occurs when considering fluid. For instance, when an object is immersed in a liquid, the liquid will exert a uniform force that is perpendicular to any surface of that object. Now, it means that the bulk modulus P will be equal to the normal force per unit area all over the change in the volume over the original volume. I used V1 here, but don't mind. It's still the same, the original, the new, the original. So, physics is about terms. You need to be able to define your term. So the change in volume is negative, so we can have negative sign here. It's very, very important. Now, I just told you that the normal force per unit area is the same thing as pressure. So we can have the negative P all over the change in the volume over the original volume, which is the same thing as the negative volume stress negative volume stress to oh my diagram again to the volume strain all right um okay i hope you really learned something in this video if you do let me know in the comment section below watch the next video share this video to your friends like this video and subscribe to this channel for more i'll be releasing more videos thanks